All right. You guys see that? Yep. Great. Okay, cool. All right, so, yeah, so I, uh, I'm a Sustainable Communities Officer at Moreland City Council, and today I'll be speaking about the Moreland City Council Bicycle Network Partnership um, where we ran Open Streets Project. So, essentially, the Open Streets trial was the first trial in Australia to close off a road outside of school, uh, closing off the road to car access and opening it up to walking, cycling, um, any form of sustainable transport during drop-off and pick-up times only over a three-week, three days over a three-week period. So to give you a bit of context on Moreland and how we move around Moreland, there's around 190,000 people live in Moreland, um, and this number is rapidly growing. So it's going to be that we're really putting an increased pressure and demand on our transport network work over the coming decades. Um, as you can see in the graph on the left, most uh, Moorelanders tend to get around by car. Uh, and although we do have really fantastic active travel facilities here in Moreland, there is a lot of work to be done in terms of mode shift, um, and especially in the north of the municipality where we have a higher than average um, car, car ownership. So as we're also growing, we're seeing that the average age of Moorelanders is decreasing. So the biggest subset of growth is in the parent population. So with a growing population of parents, uh, we're going to be seeing more pressure on our local schools uh, and thus on the local school traffic um, and the ongoing journeys that amount from, you know, dropping the kids off at school then heading off to work on that same journey. So uh, this is going to have really far and wide-reaching implications on our transport network and on congestion on our roads in the future. Um, so 40 years ago, around 25% of children were driven to school. Now that figure is more around 75%. Um, so if in Moreland our biggest growth is really happening in that parent population, we need to think seriously about how this is going to impact our transport network here. So one of the first and foremost impacts of the way we're going to be moving around is on the congestion. So school drop-off um, and pick-up makes trips on Melbourne's roads take around 10 times longer. And although these are short trips um, at volume, they really amount to quite a lot of congestion um, on the transport network. Um, that again, they feed into ongoing trips. So if you're getting in the car to take your kid to school, you're probably then just going to drive on to work or drive on to the grocery store. Um, and experts are estimating that these additional costs generated by school trips is in the hundreds of millions of dollars. So it's a big issue and it's only going to get um, more serious. Uh, of course, also road safety outcomes. Over a quarter of all road incidents in Australia occur around school pickup time. Um, and we've all seen, I'm sure, how dangerous the roads are on these narrow streets outside schools with rat running and, um, you know, parents really focused on getting a park and not really watching children navigating those roads around them. There's health implications of this. One in four Victorian children are overweight or obese and four or five children are not meeting the recommended 60 minutes of physical activity every day. So by being driven to school every single day, um, that feeds into that sedentary activity and kids aren't getting there, um, you know, a really great opportunity to be moving on their way to and from school. Uh, and, of course, impacts on the environment. Um, transport accounts for more than a third of an average household's carbon emissions here in Moreland uh, and air quality concerns too when you've got cars idling um, and blocked up in traffic outside school gates where you've got young lungs breathing that in. Um, that's, you know, a really, really serious problem and, and one that has sparked a lot of movement on open streets around the world uh, in terms of air quality and children's growth outside schools. So when you're considering these impacts on, you know, the future transport network, we also need to consider the context and the changes to the way we're moving around um, based on, you know, the, the pandemic and how our lives and the way we move are really going to be changing in the future. So, um, I mean, obviously we've seen a huge increase in walking and cycling over the last year. Um, we've seen more flexible and remote working happening and with flexible working means changes in travel behaviour of families that probably might not have changed for years and years and years because they've always been driving that one trip to work. We're now seeing this opportunity to, um, you know, shift up people working from home, not driving those trips. We've seen this mindset change in how people prioritise space. So before taking away a car park to give it to people to sit was just unfathomable. Now with social distancing, we've really seen an appetite and a demand for reprioritising um, road space to give safe space for social distancing. Um, this then leads into, you know, increased local spending for businesses as an economic support over COVID. Uh, and also just an increase in localised living and getting around our neighbourhoods on foot and, and um, with these five 
kilometre restrictions. I mean, if anywhere seen at Melbourne has, really that um, importance of being connected with your local community and, and spending and living locally. Uh, and, of course, the importance of community cohesion um, during times of social isolation and how important neighbours and community networks were um, over the last year and will continue to be as, as we go forward. So, really, we are in quite a time of change, as we all know, uh, but it's really with in terms of changing behaviours, times of disruption are the key. And um, when we're looking at changing travel behaviours and looking at trials and pilots, it's really the best time to be um, tapping into those. So um, considering the pressures on the transport network that we're looking at, the changes around the world, um, a solution to, to, you know, some of these problems has arisen and it's not really been that recently. So the first street closure um, outside of school was in Italy in the 1990s. Um, it's taught, they're, you know, they're commonly referred to as school streets in uh, around Europe, but by restricting vehicular traffic during peak drop-off and pick-up times, um, these street closures have been shown to uh, facilitate active travel, improve air quality, reduce congestion, um, encourage healthier lifestyles and shape this community connection. Um, in looking at more recent events, um, as a response to the COVID crisis, the UK has rolled out over 430 of these open streets or school streets in the last year. Uh, they had around 30 or 40 before um, COVID, and they've just doubled down. And these streets are closed off using a variety of methods. So they're not just, um, some of them are temporary, literally just a traffic cone and someone standing out there. But more often than not around Europe, they're permanent infrastructure. So they're every single day, morning and afternoon, they're enforced either with bollards or um, with ANPR cameras. So um yeah, there's, there's a real, this is happening around the world. Um, there's a real appetite for it in response to the changes in the transport network, the changes in the way we move and, and the way we live um, with COVID. So taking from that, we wanted to think about, okay, well, how can this model work with our transport policy here in Moreland? So the Moreland Integrative Transport Strategy sets out council's strategic direction for transport planning for the next decade. And programs that look at changes to street space outside our schools are really integral to our transport policy. And they actually address many of the key action items in our transport policy. So from looking at closing busy roads um, with the community, roads that are either strong rat running, local streets, but especially areas where we do want to encourage people to linger and spend time and form community connection, looking at um, rolling out behaviour change programs, which encourage sustainable transport through series like, uh, through initiatives like sub-neighbourhood block trials um, and developing programs to significantly increase the proportion of school sustainable transport by looking at priority access outside school gates for walking and cycling, moving school drop-offs away from entrances. Um, open streets really was hitting a lot of the um, the items that we're really wanting to address over the next 10 or so years. And we have an 80% um, target of school students arriving to school via sustainable travel by 2030. So what did we do? This is uh, the trial that we ran in March with Bicycle Network uh, and we worked with Brunswick East Primary School. So for three Fridays in March between 8 and 9.30 and 3 and 4.30 p.m., we shut off uh, about 200-metre section of the road to car traffic uh, and opened up the space for walking, cycling, chalking, um, conversation, connection, everything. So residents that lived in that section of the street and students or families that had accessibility needs were still able to access the road. Uh, they, were, we, they were given a permit and uh, they were escorted by traffic management staff to their destination. Drop-off zones were relocated for families that need to drive um, and we mapped out where these families could park and then walk the last few hundred metres. And, of course, we had a lot of fun and games during the closures. So I've just got a little snippet of a video I'll play, um, if it'll work. Mullen City Council is really proud to have partnered with Bicycle Network and Brunswick East Primary School to put on the Open Streets trial. It's really important for us to see children feeling safe and active and be in the community together. And with our streets, it's been so fantastic to see an opportunity where the children are riding their bikes and walking. Obviously, the Ride to School program's been going for many years now, but to see it have the next level of actually closing a street and allowing children to ride their bikes, as you can see here, have a great time, um, have some smoothies and just feel really connected to their community. 
safe from the cars and the, the noise of commuters. Uh, it's really lovely to see, and particularly in this area of East Brunswick, with all the congestion we're dealing with, uh, we've just really seen how um, supportive the community has been of this trial, and we hope to roll it out across other parts of Moreland and with other schools as well. My name is Ziggy Mellon Williams. I'm the coordinator for Active Travel, and I organise this whole thing happening behind us. And at the end of it, at the in the day, I take a tally and count how many people rode or walked to school today or skated. It's lots of fun. It encourages kids to ride, but not just for the smoothies and stuff. Um, hopefully, it will encourage them to ride just most most days. Um. So, yeah, as you can see, I'm, I'm just the spokesperson tonight. He was actually the coordinator of the whole event. Um, it was really great to see, you know, the kids really took a lot of ownership of the event, um, which is fantastic. So this was the layout of the street. Um, as you see, about 200 metres in front of the street was closed off, so you've got three closure points. Uh, there's about 10 residential houses in that area. And you can see there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on on the street, a lot of activation, bike parking, chalking, um, fixing stations, all sorts of things. Uh, so this is a process we sort of went through. We um, first of all we short, looked at shortlisting the schools. So considering it's a trial, we only had one or two schools um, who were interested, and they work with Bicycle Network pretty closely at the start of this. But looking at things like street feasibility, the current levels of active travel at the school, uh, their active travel programs that they run existing infrastructure, the number of residents impacted, the zone size, all of those things were taken into consideration when you're choosing a school to run this at. Um, once we selected the school, obviously working really closely with the headmaster, the active travel champions there to understand the specific active travel needs in the local area. Um, then working with traffic management, uh, getting up a traffic management plan done, approval from Vic Roads um, as it came off a uh, Vic Roads road, looking at access requirements, um, then and, and permits, event permits for council. Uh, then communicating the program with parents and residents. This was really important. We letter dropped um, residents. We sent out comms to parents. Uh, we provided little cutout permits for residents to be able to get through with their cars if they needed to. We encouraged them not to, and, and often they actually were standing out talking on the street engaging, but they were able to if they needed to leave, and parents were notified of um, relocated parking zones. Um, then we, we collected a lot of baseline data, so the current mode share at the school, um, the congest perceptions of the congestion on the street, perceptions around safety of cycling, the air quality, social distancing space, all these things we, we surveyed for with residents and parents beforehand. Um, then, you know, planning the event, booking in the, the fun stuff for the final day, um, getting the permits sorted and looking at um, changes in that street layout as weeks went on um, and being able to adapt how we how we functioned and how we laid out the street as we had it over three Fridays. Um, on the day, the, the final day was ride to school day, so we had all of the, you know, extra coffee carts, smoothie bikes, bike repairs, all of that stuff on the final day. Um, and we did a lot of data collection on the day, face-to-face um, -face surveying and traffic management staff obviously there. And then post the event, we surveyed again. Uh, There's a lot of media coverage, um, you know, collating feedback, meeting with the school, talking about how they found it and um, writing up a report on the outcomes of the trial. So this is a bit of an example of, uh, so that's the feedback survey that we used on the day. And then from pre-surveys, a lot of comments about, um, you know, the dangers of that street, the dangerous driving, the congestion, there's nowhere for kids to ride their bikes, keeps of kids riding on the footpath. Um, we, we were able to collect that data on surveys online and also all the resident comms had QR codes that they could scan and give feedback. And then on the day and post surveys, we just had, it was a complete flip where we had, you know, everybody loving the trial, wanting to see more, um, lots of comments about, you know, how safe it was for kids to ride um, and just enjoyment of the, of the trial. So these are some of the results, which is the um, nitty gritty fun stuff. So we saw a 20% increase in active travel over the trial days. Um, which, I mean, on the final day, we had 95% of kids travelling actively. So that's not just travelling actively from the start of the open street zone into the school because obviously they had to. That's from home to school, 95% of kids travelling actively on that final day. 
Um, we saw 100% of parents that were surveyed intending to travel actively as a result of the trial once a week following. 91.3% uh, of um, families felt that kids could walk or cycle safely during the trial. Um, really high uh, ratings of enjoyability should the traffic be reduced. And, um, and I think the most interesting is, uh, and I'll go into this a little bit in the next slide, the 83% of residents and parents wanting to see this at least weekly going forward. Um, and like I said, we we got some great um, data from residents and, and local business owners, people that pass through that street on their commute, stopping on the day and talking with us and talking with Bicycle Network staff about how great it was. So it wasn't just um, parents saying how fantastic it was. So this is really probably the most interesting and the most exciting is that when we asked um, parents how often they want to see the street opened, 65% want to see it every single day. So this is that model that they use in the UK, right, where they where they shut the street off to cars every day. 65% of parents want to see it every day, and it's not just parents that cycle. It's vehicle-driving parents around almost 50% of vehicle-driving parents that we surveyed want to see it every day as well. And you'll see that no vehicle-driving parents didn't want to see it at all or even yearly. Um, we had a really, really, you know, keen appetite for this kind of stuff. And I think it's also interesting to note that around 40% of the kids at that school live out of zone. So it's not, you know, it's not a school where everybody lives really close. Of course, they want to see it. You've got kids travelling quite far and families travelling quite far, um, and that's higher than average out of zone kind of rate, and they still want to see these kinds of trials outside school. Uh, lots of press, pretty much all of it really good. Um, the, the age article online got a lot of a lot of traction. Um, and yeah, Koshi was on it on Sunrise. We got Channel 7. It, it was, yeah, we went, oh, that's a lie. Um, yeah, it was really, really great. And, and surprisingly, actually, Sunrise on Channel 7 did a, a pretty good coverage of it. So um, yeah, got lots of attention. The learnings from it, obviously having parents and residents um, informed and on board early on is really important. Um, and the kids were the biggest advocates for the whole thing. Like if a parent forgot the kid was tugging on their arm at 6 a.m. saying, we've got ride to school today, we've got the closure, so we didn't really, they did all the hard work for us. Um, schools have to be on board um, and already showing that they're trying to improve active travel outcomes. Um, activating the space is really important. I don't think you need all the, the huge celebration stuff, but just having chalk and a few traffic cones is super important because people aren't used to spending time standing on a road and it took a while over the weeks to get parents and to get students actually out on that road. They were still standing on the curb at the very start. So activating the space is really important. Getting council community excited. Um, we have Ben Carroll there, you know, getting getting a little bit of hype around it and making sure it's delivered in collaboration with other initiatives that council are running so it's not a siloed thing, making sure it's really integrated. So on that integration um, and the next steps, I guess, for us at Moreland, it's been now delivered as part of a Ride and Stride behaviour change program that I'm managing, which is essentially a holistic uh, program that looks at delivering behaviour change, a whole a wide variety of behaviour change initiatives with two pilot schools um, and similar to what Lauren was talking about, really understanding those barriers and enablers to active travel. And one of the programs that we will be hoping to run with each ride and stride school is an open streets pilot um, trial. Uh, and, and we got almost a third of all primary schools in Moreland apply to be a pilot school. And that is a, a big part of that was them seeing the open streets and wanting that outside their own school. We've got a second trial planned at a school in Coburg North um, in a few months, and we're now looking at next stages for taking on the, the first trial at Brunswick East and what we can do considering there's a lot of appetite there. Um, and really, in terms of going forward, we're looking at building off the learnings from these trials. We want to test it in different parts of the municipality, and we want to develop a model for progressing to more permanent methods um, as they're, they're seen overseas. I think the key takeaway, um, I guess, from this is that in terms of taking it to your to your councils and looking at how you can do it is really thinking about what the your end goal you know is it a celebration in just terms of it's a fun way to get kids excited about active travel or it's a way to reward a school that's been doing well or a way to you know um, encourage schools to do more or is it a conversation starter where you're giving the community a real taste of 
street space that prioritises people and and roads for our most vulnerable road users um, and reallocating that road space for the next generation of, of Moreland residents. And I know reallocation of road space is a huge contentious issue lots of many councils at the moment. And I think trials like this can really give people a taste of what street space can look like when it's not given over to, you know, cars back to back, bumper to bumper. Um, and then lastly, is it looking towards a bigger picture? Like, are you doing this trial to see how you can actually, you know, try it out, see if it works at that school, if there's uptake, then look at the next level, then look at maybe some permanency. Um, I think it's really important that you're, that there's strategy behind which schools you select, the way that you're doing it, the, the investment and the time that you put into it, um, and looking at making long-term improvements to the transport network um, through these more permanent measures putting in outside schools. Uh, so lastly, I just think this quote really sums it up. Um, from 15 minutes to an hour at the e either end of the school day, the streets outside fill with the sounds of conversation rather than the sounds of engines. And for tens or hundreds of metres of the school journey, families get respite from the traffic that dominates every other street in their cities. And I think that picture and um, that quote really sum up what this project and the power of trials like this for our, for our network here in Moreland. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Zoe. That's a beautiful image and a beautiful quote.